Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to quickly and easily master your music specifically for online streaming. Mastering is a huge, huge topic. It's the crucial final last step for your production before you send it off into the world. So I'm going to try and keep this video smooth and relatively short, but there will be lots of other links to videos and websites in the description of this video, along with lots of timestamps. So for those of you who are interested, there's a lot more information out there. I made a very popular mastering video last year, and this is an update to address some questions people had, but it's also just a, a fresh look at the whole process. I also want to say that I still do recommend hiring a professional mastering engineer, someone with a lot of skill and experience in a really balanced room with excellent monitoring, they will be able to get the best result for your song. Uh, but for those of us that want to give it a go by ourselves, want to learn some skills or simply can't afford a mastering engineer because it can be very expensive, I hope this guide sort of sets you off in the right direction and helps to demystify a lot of the process. So let's just jump right in. I'm using FL Studio 20.5. You can use any DAW, they all sound the same. And the first thing is that I've pulled the mix in to a fresh and clean session. You can master inside your same production session, but I like exporting a stereo wave file and pulling it into a new session. It gives me peace of mind just knowing that that sound is locked in, but also it saves the CPU's resources. Mastering plugins are notoriously heavy on your computer's resources, so I like just having a clean session. So I have this routed to the master, and I also have a couple of reference songs. So these are mastered tracks that I want to sort of match the overall balance of, but we'll go into that in more detail in a minute. So I have this routed to the master channel here, and I have a few plugins. So a lot of these are duplicates just to show you differences in this video. But the first stage is going to be an EQ stage. So I have various different EQs loaded and I'll show you what they're all going to be doing in a minute. Some are analog modeled and I have some free ones as well. And the purpose of these EQs is to correct any issues and then try to enhance the tonal balance of the song. The next step I have is compression. So I have a Slate Digital compressor here and that's going to be trying to glue the song together a little bit and add a little bit of excitement. And you can use any brand of processors paid for, free, stock, third party. Just use the ones that sound best to you. There are thousands of different options out there. The next step is sort of a sweetening stage. I'm just going to be trying some different creative things to add just an extra little 1% to the song. So maybe some console emulation, tape machines, saturators, things like that. And then the final step is a limiter to make sure that our loudness is correct and that the song is going to stack up alongside other commercial releases. I do have two other plugins here for referencing. One is the tonal balance control from Isotope, which will help me gauge the tonal balance of my master. And for the loudness, I have the Ulean Loudness Meter Pro, uh, which is a fantastic loudness meter, and the free version is the best free loudness meter on the market. The first step is to check the mix over and also add some fades. Uh, listen on monitors and headphones. I'm only using headphones in this tutorial so that I can speak into the microphone, but ideally use studio monitors when mastering. Listen for any clicks, pops, uh, any resonances, things like that. You wanna make sure the mix is exactly how you want it. If there's something lacking, uh, you should be trying to fix that in the mixing stage. So definitely check the mix, make sure you're completely happy with the mix before you start the mastering. So now it's time to add some fades at the start and the end, and this is to make sure that there's no click or pop at the end of your song. So in whatever DAW you're using, make sure that this final gain that you're gonna automate, this fade, make sure that it is post all of your effects. You want it to be after your limiter. So I'm just gonna create an automation clip on the master, with that created, I'm just gonna right click and copy the value at zero. I'm going to paste the value there and I'm just gonna add in a little fade and then I'm just going to adjust it and see what sounds right. So I'm probably just gonna make it a very, very quick fade because the song already fades up. It's been a year, still it's not clear if we can ever be friends. Perfect. The song I'm mastering is I Don't Think We Can Be Friends, the Solo Ray remix. This is available on Spotify if you want to listen to it. I know a lot of people often ask about that. And then at the end, I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna paste the value in so that we're definitely at zero dB here, and I'm just gonna fade it down. And this point here is where I'm gonna choose the end of the song to be. So I'm just gonna cut everything off at that point. Another quick point about checking the mix, and that I should have mentioned, make sure that your mix has headroom. It doesn't really matter how much headroom, you know, if you've got 5 dB of headroom, 7 dB, 2 dB, just make sure that there's at least a handful of dB 
between 0db and the top of your mix. It just gives all of the mastering plugins room to breathe and work. Okay, so with that done, we're on to step two, and this is gonna be using EQ to uh, help fix any problems in the mix and then also enhance the mix. So the first thing I'm gonna do is use these reference songs down here, and I'm gonna try and listen to these at a similar volume. These are songs that were mastered and I like the way they were mastered, preferably in the same genre. These two are not really in the same genre. Um, and I'm just gonna listen to the overall tonal balance and just see where it stacks up compared to my song. We can be, I don't think we can be friends. So I'm just sort of getting a feeling for it. Be friends. I don't think we can be. And then I'm just gonna compare it to the mix we have here. Dancing. When I hear your name, I can't escape seeing your face. And it doesn't really sound like there's any big issues. The next thing I'm gonna do is use that tonal balance control just to check. This is a really, really great tool. This lets you know the distribution of energy between different frequency ranges. So if I play a portion of the song, it's gonna show how much energy is in the low, the mid, and the high. I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be. So right now it looks like I'm hitting sort of good values compared to other commercial releases. I can also go into the fine mode and see if it looks all good. Again, this is a visual tool. I wouldn't recommend relying too much on visual tools when you're mastering. It really is better to just use your ears, but using tools like that can really help you when there's problems you can't hear because of your monitoring environment. And this is why hiring a professional really is a good job because our rooms often do lie to us a lot. So now let's use the EQ to try and uh, adjust this mix a little bit. The first thing that I would recommend doing is grabbing a parametric EQ, if possible, linear phase. So I have a linear phase EQ. And I have a band here, which is a high pass filter cutting off just about everything below 20 Hertz. I would recommend this uh, for any mastering job. I have a video showing why this is very important that's linked here and in the description. There's nothing down there that you can hear. So it's just taking up headroom, taking up space in your mix. The next thing we're going to use this EQ for is to adjust the tonal balance of the song. We're going to maybe make a couple of dips and boosts and see if it sounds any better. Not just different, but definitely better. I've noticed that the song feels a little bit dense in the low mids, which is a really good thing in this song, but I'm going to see if clearing up some of that makes a difference to the overall sound. I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be friends. I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be friends. I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be friends. I don't think we can. So the mix definitely sounded more exciting when I boosted the top end there. I think it did sound quite good when I removed a bit of the low mids. The mix definitely sounded a lot cleaner, but it also lost a lot of its density and thickness. And I really like the thick element of this mix. So I think I'm going to leave it as it is with this EQ. And a word of warning is that if you're doing lots of little boosts and cuts like this and you're listening in an untreated room and you're finding little resonances and you're poking little holes up and down in your mix like this, that's probably a really bad idea unless you're in a really, really perfectly balanced room and you can really hear what's going on. It's likely that these little resonances you hear are actually your room and the way the sound energy is interacting in your room, tricking you into thinking there's a problem with the mix that there isn't. At this stage, if you hear a resonance that's wrong, like say there's a note on a guitar that's really ringing out, I would recommend just going back to the mix and fixing it there and just leaving your master EQ as simple as possible. So that was some corrective EQ, but now I'm going to use an analog modeled EQ to add some more tone and color uh, to this mix. If you've never seen one of these before, don't worry. There's loads and loads of different types of analog modeled plugins. This is just one I grabbed in a hurry. I'm going to be using the high and low shelf. So just adding or taking away some high end or low end and really hear the way that th this just sounds different uh, compared to that parametric EQ if I add some low end or take some low end away. So let's take a listen. I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be friends I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be friends now I was boosting quite a lot, 6 dB and then taking away 6 dB again, but that really changed the entire shape and character of the low end of that song. And I think adding a little bit of that really adds this weight and thickness to the song without muddying it up too much. Some of the analog styled EQs can have a tendency to just impart a really nice tone and character 
Whereas if I was using a digital EQ, sometimes boosting the low end just sounds really muddy. So again, I'm going to do the same thing for the high end and see if I notice a difference in tone that I like. I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be friends. I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be friends. I think a little bit of that does make a difference, but again, this is just down to your own personal taste. I quickly wanted to recommend some free plugins here as well for those that don't have those analog ones. I'd recommend everything from Tokyo Dawn Records, the TDR bundle. They have a huge free bundle with dynamic EQs, EQs, compressors, everything. It's this really amazing set of plugins there. The next stage is compression. Compression is often used in mastering to glue everything together. Uh, reduce a little bit of the dynamics and also again impart more character and more flavor onto the mix. Now already this mix is not overly dynamic. It's fairly squashed, it's fairly dense as I've already said. So I'm going to have to be careful with this compressor to not just kill the dynamics of it. So what I'm going to do is just start by selecting a preset. I think I selected this punchy mix. I just like giving it somewhere to start and I'm going to have to adjust every single dial anyway. This is the Slate Digital VBC Grey, but again, just use any compressor that you're familiar with. We've got, you know, attack, release, threshold, ratio. It's all here. It's just maybe laid out a little bit different. So the first thing I'm going to do is just adjust the threshold until I'm getting a little bit of uh, compression. I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be friends. And already I can hear that it's really crushed. And this is because the high pass filter isn't engaged. So every time the bass is hitting or the low end, it's just crushing it. So what I'm going to do is push this high pass filter up to maybe 100 hertz or 150 and see if that opens up the mix an awful lot. Let's take a listen. I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be friends. Wow. I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be friends. When I increased that high pass filter, it meant that the compression wasn't being triggered by those kicks and that bass, and then the whole song opened up and was a lot more dynamic again. So now what I'm going to do is bypass this, turn it on and off, and see if we like the difference. I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be friends. I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be friends. I really like the difference that adds. There was a small increase in gain, but there's something it does to the stability of the low end of the mix. If you listen again, it just makes it sound a lot more stable and not sort of fluttering around as much. It's kind of hard to describe these, but if you take another listen, I'll turn it on and off and uh, we can, and hopefully you can hear for yourself. I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be friends. I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be friends. It almost makes the top end seem a little bit wider as well. It's, it's a weird effect this one has, but that's what I mean by that tone and character. This is doing more than simply regulating the decibel level of a track. It's definitely imparting something on it, some sort of characteristic or harmonic that just adds to it. Something that I just want to stress again, when you're doing these mastering jobs, you really do need to take a break from what you're listening to and go listen to your reference tracks, listen to other songs on Spotify that you like. Keep refreshing your ears. If you're mastering for more than four or five minutes without just stopping the audio and listening to something else, then you're probably just becoming so used to what you're listening to that you'll just start liking it or hating it no matter what you do. So the next step, again, using any plugins that you have is some sort of excitement, just adding an extra little percent to the song just whatever you can do so in this case i have some slate plugins but you know there's so many brands that are amazing this is just what i have try stuff like console emulation try tape saturation i even have a sonic enhancer here so i'm just going to mess around with some of this stuff and see if i like the result so i have a virtual mix bus here i'm just going to drive it a little bit select a different preset i don't think we can be i don't think we can be friends I don't think we can be, I don't think it's really interesting the way these sound. The Brit N just adds so much low end to the mix, it's like almost overpowering. The next thing we're gonna try is a little bit of distortion, so a tube saturator. Again, you don't want to push this too hard, but sometimes adding a little bit of this can really just enrich a song. I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be So that would be pushing it too far. I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be friends. I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be. 
well, it doesn't sound like it's making it sound bad. So I'll probably just leave that on, maybe pull it back a little bit and then, you know, try different exciters, different modules, just whatever you've got. Just this is the time to have a bit of fun with your plugins. You can always just delete them. This is the time to really experiment and develop your style of mastering. You might find something that no one else is doing. You might find something cool. Don't be afraid of this because at the end of the day, if you don't like it, you can simply turn it off and move on. And now onto the final step before exporting, which is the loudness. And for this, I'm going to be using the Ozone 8 limiter. I have lots of different limiters that I like using. Just use whatever you have. Uh, ideally one purpose made for mastering. And I'm also going to be using the Ulean Loudness Meter Pro. If you haven't already downloaded the free version, definitely do so. Use the link in the description. It's free. It's an absolutely wonderful mastering tool. I have a whole tutorial dedicated to how to use it in the description. In the description, there's also a video which goes into the mastering loudness in so much detail if you're curious, but I'm going to give you sort of a quick guide, uh, some pointers to look for. So I'm going to be looking at the integrated LUFS on this meter and the True Peak Max. I'm going to press play and I'm going to be adjusting things on my limiter and explaining what I'm doing as I'm doing it so that you hopefully understand. So I'm going to press play at the loudest part of my song. So the first thing that I'm going to do is select True Peaks on my limiter. So I have to select the True Peaks, that's really important. I'm going to lower my ceiling to at least minus 1 dB. You need to start here, you might even need to take it lower. But start at minus 1 and see where that takes you. Now, I have a preset selected for Spotify, a loud Spotify master, uh, but basically you really want to push your song until it's at about at least minus 14 integrated LUFS overall and then maybe a little bit further if you like the sound of it. So I'm going to take my threshold down until I'm getting a little bit of limiting. And as you can see, this is already a very loud song. I'm going to reduce my ceiling slightly until we're not getting any true peaks. So I'm getting a little bit of limiting, but as you can see, I already have a really loud song. This is already at minus nine, minus 10. So I'm probably not going to push it any further than this. Now I'm going to purely look at some of the functions on the limiter and I'm going to try and show you the difference between some of these different controls here like fast or slow. So if I lower the threshold a little bit, remember where I had it, I'm just going to push it a little bit further so you can hear this better. If I make the limiting too fast, it starts crunching the audio, which could be a really cool artistic effect in some genres, but it's something I want to avoid. And if I make the limiting too slow, the recovery is too slow, the track just constantly feels like it's being sucked up and down, it's just, it loses its focus. So let's start somewhere in the middle and I'll adjust these and just listen out for the differences. I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be friends. You hear all that crunch? I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be friends. I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be friends. So you definitely want to set this somewhere in the middle. I mean, I tend to find that around two sort of works for a lot of songs but i don't like just giving specific numbers to aim for but somewhere you know on the faster side tends to work for a lot of pop songs but just not all the way down here or it just starts really really crunching some limiters have tools to help um make it seem like there's more dynamics in it they all do this in different ways ozone has a transient emphasis tool so if i push this up things like the snare or the hi-hats might appear to poke out a little bit more so let's take a listen I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be friends I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be friends But as I pushed that all the way to the top, the whole song just started going crazy forward back in these headphones. So you don't want to push those tools too much, but potentially a little bit of that might sort of add a little bit of dynamics back into your song. The next step with the limiter is the dithering. So they'll all have different options for this. But in here, I'm going to export at 24 bit depth. Even if you're exporting to 24, you still need to dither. You certainly do if you're exporting to a CD. I tend to keep it on medium and then high or medium. And what dithering is, it's basically a low level noise that helps your music sound better when it's encoded to lower bit depths. So without getting too technical with it, it just makes your music sound better where it's going to be distributed and converted into different formats. So I have my dithering on 24, medium and high in this song. Again, you can just test different uh, shapes and different modes and see if any of them sound better or worse. Again, this is a step for experimentation and now it would be time to export the whole song. So I'm gonna select the entire region of the song. I'm gonna to go to file, export, 
in this case, a WAV file. I'm going to name it and save it. And then I'm just going to select cut remainder because I want it to cut exactly where I've cut. 24 bit, high quality, all of this looks good. You can pretty much copy these settings here and then start. So now that that's been exported, what I'm going to do is just turn off all of my mastering effects here. And I've dragged in the master into this same project and I'm now going to compare them. So initially, if I just switch between the mix and the master, there should be quite an increase in volume. I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be friends. I don't think we can Which initially sounds better, but what we really want to do is take the volume down ever so slightly of this master until they're at about the same volume, the same perceived volume. I don't think we can be friends. So that sounds about right. And now I really want to listen to the two of them side by side and, and I need to compare them because if I don't like the master more, I've really messed up here. You want to listen to how punchy that kick sounds, where the vocals are sitting. Do things feel crushed? Check over all parts of the song. So I'm going to check over here in the verse. When I hear your name, I can't escape seeing your face. Definitely just sounds more full. If I go to the chorus again. I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be friends. I don't think we can be, I don't think we What I also did is I exported a much louder version as well. So I'm just going to reset all the volumes. And now what I'm going to show you is that sometimes loudness can fool you a little bit. So this version is loud. This version is even louder with more, uh, a couple more dBs of compression. So if I switch between these two. I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be friends. And initially, I really like this loud master because it just sounded, it was just thicker, fuller, louder, better. But now what I'm going to do is match the gain so that the vocals roughly feel like they're all at the same level uh, between these two masters here. So I just cut away for a few minutes whilst I match the gain exactly the perceived loudness, I suppose. And what you might hear is that the version with less limiting, although it's still quite a bit of limiting, it's just so much better than the one that's been crushed. So let's take a listen. I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be friends. I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be friends. It just has so much more depth to it. The pads underneath evolve up and down and swell a little bit better. The kicks punch, but they don't crunch the limiter. And it, to me, it just sounds better. So when you're comparing masters, make sure that you're comparing at the same level. And what I like to do is get it so that the vocals sound the same level, so that when you switch between each version, the vocals don't jump up or down in volume at all. Then I know that it's roughly at the right level. Something I then do as a final check is I open up the loudness meter again, I drag the file into the loudness meter. It's now analyzed the entire song and it shows me how loud it is. And my true peaks are good. There's nothing over minus one. You need it to be under minus one. The integrated is pretty loud. I mean, minus about minus 11 LUFS. There's definitely louder stuff on Spotify, but I might wanna, I could probably take that down, have a little bit more of a dynamic mix. But if I go over to my dynamic range graph, it looks like my dynamics are really good, actually. It's all in the green. Uh, I've got, you know, it's not incredibly squashed, incredibly compressed. So I could compress it more, but actually I quite like the way it sounds. So that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. For more information, please do check the description. I hope that helped. I hope you have a great week and I hope to see you in the next video too. Bye for now.